Hello Internet. Today we're going to be talking about reflection. Uh, specifically, we're going to be looking at how to reflect, say, a projectile or something. But this reflection that we're going to be implementing is going to be pretty much identical to how uh, it's done in, say, a shader when you're doing specular lighting. Uh, so just as an example, I have this sphere here. So this little white point in the center of it, that's the specular lighting. The way that's calculated is if you take the light and shine it at an object, that's going to hit some plane. It's going to hit some surface. And so by taking the normal of that surface, that arrow coming back, and the angle of incident, how you hit it, you want to reflect across that. So you're effectively going back off. And so that is exactly what we're doing here. The difference between specular lighting and that is that specular lighting also includes a calculation for the view angle. Uh, so we're not going to get into that specifically, but I, th I just kind of thought it gives a sort of a visual example. Uh, but that's really all we need this sphere for, so that's going to go away, and we're going to go to this guy. So this is our projectile emitter. We're going to emit projectiles from this. I've kind of hooked this up just with a gizmo for now, so you can kind of get the idea. It's got just a wire sphere and then just an arrow handle. So you can kind of point it in any direction, and that's going to emit a ray that is going to bounce some number of times. Uh, and so that's just sort of what we're going to do. We're going to do this all in gizmos, uh, so we can run it just in the editor really easily. And because it kind of, you don't really need this attached to anything to just kind of show the concepts. We don't need this attached to a particle that we bounce around. That's just going to take longer. This way we can see it instantly and kind of play with it a bit more. So that's sort of what I'm going with. If you're curious how I'm doing the... Uh, that little gizmo thing. This is the code. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, so what we need is we need two things. First, we need an int, which is going to be the number of per, uh, reflections. Uh, so this is going to be the reflection count. Uh, we'll call this the max reflection count, because you, if you go straight off into nothing, there may not necessarily be something to reflect off of. It may just need to keep going. And so this is going to be, we're going to set that to say five to start with. And then the second thing we need is a maximum distance. So max uh, step distance. So the way I'm going to do uh, approach this problem is since we're using raycasts for this, every ray is going to have a maximum distance it can travel before it, uh, it stops. To avoid uh, floating point issues, we're not going to use the max distance because you, if you go the max distance and you haven't reached your maximum steps, I don't really know what that means. Um, and, and so we're just going to ignore that for now. I think you could probably approach that if you had a float.max as the max distance. It would probably work. You could just stop if you didn't hit anything. Uh, so, but just for this, we're going we're gonna to have a max step distance. And I'll set this set to 200. So we can still have it go for quite a ways. It's just we're limiting this to some degree. And so that should be everything we really need. Then, now that I have all of that fun stuff, let's do a... What do we want to call this? Uh, draw predicted reflection pattern. Sure, we'll call it that. Why not? <laughs> and so this is going to do pretty much all of the work. It's going to draw our reflection. Uh, I don't want that. I am going to want some parameters here. I didn't really think about this, but we're going to want a position. We're going to want a, uh, I think it's another vector three, which will be our direction. And then we're going to want a int. Uh, this is going to be a recursive algorithm, because why not? <laughs> and so this is going to be uh, reflections remaining. And so when that hits zero, when our reflections remaining is equal to zero, then I want to return. We're done. Uh, so that's our out for our recursive algorithm. Every recursive algorithm needs something at the beginning to stop it. Uh, not everyone, but most of them. This is pretty much 
if you're writing a recursive algorithm, this is where you should start. And then what we're going to do is just pass in some parameters. I'm going to actually transform position plus uh, this dot transform dot forward. And I'm actually going to multiply this by our arrow that we have is 0.5 uh, units long. And then the wire sphere is 0.25 and they add on to one another. So the total length of that initial gizmo we have is 0.07 or 0.75. And so if I do this, it will tack on our new gizmos right onto the end. And so we can actually start our array a little bit forward for totally perfect predictions. That's not great uh, because it means if we move right up next to a wall, we'll go through it. But for just this example, it will just kind of make everything cleaner. Uh, and we're, we're just predicting things. So I'm going to start like that uh, just because it, it makes sense to me. And then for the forward vector, well, for the direction, we're just going to use the forward vector. And then we can just use the max reflection count for the reflections remaining. That is this entire method done. I don't think we're going to need to come back to that. <laughs> I may eat my words, but the cool thing is we're pretty much to the point where we're doing our ray casts, which means we need to either calculate a new direction or use the old one because uh, whatever, uh, we're just going to be either reflecting or if we don't hit anything, we're not reflecting. Uh, so to do ray cast to detect reflection. But if we don't have anything, if there isn't any ray cast, we don't have to do any work. Instead, we can just recursively call this again. So I can just say draw reflection pattern with our position plus our direction times the max uh, step distance. We're going to have to have something that's going to actually update this. That'll be in this if statement up here for the raycast, but we don't need that right now. Uh, so we're going to just add that on. Our direction is going to actually stay the same because this whole part is assuming we didn't hit anything. Our if statement for the raycast can affect the direction. We can reset that direction. And then I just want reflections remaining to be this minus one. If we don't have that minus one, we have an infinite loop and then unity will be sad. Um, so there we go. This is our entire recursive thing. The only other bit that I really need is I need to draw uh, gizmos dot draw line from our position to our position plus our direction times the max step distance. And that will handle drawing our lines. I'm going to make the actual reflected line. Uh, is there like a yellow? Yeah. So reflected stuff will be yellow. I hope that stands out. If not, we'll change it. But we've got red and then it'll have a yellow line coming off. And because we don't have reflection implemented, this should just go off a thousand units. Uh, it should go off. Yeah, a thousand. So we should see a really long straight yellow line going off into the distance. And so this way we, we know we have a recursive line drawing algorithm, which I guess isn't that interesting. Um, but we can use this to kind of alter things. We can start playing with this now. So I want to actually add the ability to do reflection, so which means we need to do a ray. Ray equals new ray. Uh, we need a, an origin and direction, so just the position and the direction. We already passed those in, which makes this super easy. Ray cast hit, we need to detect our hit so we can get the normal out. Because uh, we're gonna need that. That's how. That's the plane we're reflecting across. Even a uh, even a sphere or something is going to have a normal angle at where you hit it. Uh, if you've ever uh, used done trig and calculated the tangent, there you go. That that's the same thing. So we need to do uh, if our physics raycast. Let's do our ray without our hit. And we're going to have a max step distance like that. And that's pretty much it. That's all we needed to do. We now have a ray. If it hit anything, we're going to end up in here and we're going to need to recalculate our direction, which means our direction is going to equal something. Otherwise, we didn't do anything. 
so we don't we don't have to do anything what we can do instead is take our position and plus equal our direction times the max step distance which means we didn't hit anything we need to step our position forward which also means here uh, because of those question marks it's going to be hating my formatting but we're going to actually set the position equal to the hit dot point so this is going to be the world space point that we hit uh, so this way we're just updating our position if I put this there, there, it stops complaining about that line. And then we can fix those question marks later. And so we don't need to update the direction if we didn't hit anything, because the direction didn't change. So this code is done here. We just need to fix this direction. What is that direction? And so the cool thing is, is Unity actually has something for this. The vector3.reflect is going to calculate this for you. I'm planning on doing a video later where we actually manually will calculate this. Uh, and we'll kind of talk a little bit more about that probably later this week. Uh, but for now, we're just going to use Unity's built-in function for it because why not? Um, if you don't need to rewrite it, don't rewrite it. But what we're going to do is it takes an input direction and a normal vector. Uh, so this is going to be the normal you hit and then the input direction. So if you're calculating light, this would be the direction of the light and it would be the angle of incident where or not the angle of incident that's don't ignore that it's going to be the normal of what you hit so if i hit my desk that'd be up and then my light coming from over there <laughs> would be hitting it and bouncing towards me if that makes any sense whatsoever <laughs> so direction we already have that uh, we have our input direction and then our normal is just going to be the hit dot normal. And I think that should be in world space. So everything should be good. We'll hit it and we'll bounce back off. And it should get us a new direction that is bouncing off in whatever direction we set. And so that updates our direction. Our position gets updated to be the hit point, which means we'll hit a wall. It will update to that point and we'll get a new direction coming off of that. So we should be able to then plug that into here and everything should be good. We'll stop our thing. I can delete my to do. And hopefully we now have reflecting things. So this bit of line should go away and it should come back here. We should kind of see a zigzag. That's sort of what I'm expecting to happen. What? Oh, <laughs> I, I missed a bit. Uh, this is wrong. This doesn't make any sense anymore because <laughs> we're updating our position. So we need to save the current uh, old position. So this will be our uh, starting position, which we'll save just as the position. We'll set that there. And then I can delete those two bits. So we just draw a line between the starting position and the new updated position that we'll start at. And then down here, we were also doing that additional uh, position modification. So we can pull that out and just use the position that we just calculated here. So hopefully we don't have this line to infinity going in the opposite direction we wanted. It shows that our reflection was working. Uh, but not necessarily in the way I had wanted it to. Uh, we got one good reflection and then it just kind of went off into infinity. But here we go. This is what we're expecting. Now we get, uh, yeah, we get enough reflections. We get one, two, three, four, five, which is exactly how many we wanted. So now we're getting those reflections inside of our sphere. I can increase this if I want to. And it ends up going off into infinity because I didn't close this room. But the cool thing is, is we can change this in real time and get totally different calculations just based off of these reflections. And so I can kind of just modify this and get good calculations of how, say, a projectile would reflect off of, say, this wall. And we can we can actually plug this same formula, that same reflection vector 3 dot reflect. 
we can plug that into normal projectiles or whatever else we're using and it should work. Uh, and there's other ways if you don't want it to say bounce off, the dot products might be a good, a good solution there uh, to kind of calculate that angle of incidence. So you're, if it's too great of an angle, if you shoot it directly into a wall, maybe you don't want it to reflect. Uh, so that's an option as well. Anyway, this is sort of basic uh, projectile reflection. It kind of gives you the idea of how it's working. I'll put the code for this out on GitHub. It'll be in a link in the description. You guys are welcome to download that or not and just build it yourself. It's fairly straightforward. There's not much to this. Uh, so I'd love to see what you guys make with this or if you make anything with this. Uh, and if you have ideas for things we can do in the future, let me know about those as well because I, I love to hear you guys' ideas your guys' ideas. And I'd like to learn better pronunciation in English. But anyway, <laughs> that's it for this video. So yeah, I guess that's it. <laughs> I said that already. Anyway, uh, until next time, see internet.